throwing frisbees or putting wiffle balls on my shoe, really? <laughs> really? I'm such a technician of the game. I'm a catcher. I'm a catcher. And by nature, I love the game. I, know I, I was coached by some phenomenal coaches from 12, Lisa and I, from 12 until, you know, until we were older. So we have a high IQ of the game. That takes you nowhere if you cannot get your kids to jump on board with you. So I'm telling you, no matter what, at the end of the day, every team here can play. And our goal is to be able to get them to play, and our goal is to be the best to them. I want them to authentically be the best, their best individuals that they can be, and how do you do that? And it's not focusing on just the mechanics of the game, it's focusing on how to be in control. How to remember that, what, is fun, what does fun mean? Is this fun just connected to outcome? Because it's super easy to have fun when I'm three for three. But what about when I'm 0 for three? How are you gonna have fun with that? Well, that's not fun. But what's fun is if you as your team can pull together, and this is something that I do all the time. I committed to this actually in my 2010 year when we won. Um, as coaches, we are always victim of being Captain Obvious. Right after a game's over, let's rally everyone together, and we have to think about the things that we're gonna address, which are Captain Obvious. Get the sack butt down. We gotta, be ahead, we gotta throw a be ahead in the count. We can't work from behind. Okay, we've gotta be able to play catch. We've gotta have a timely hit. Those are captain obvious things, but as coaches, that's our job, right? We've gotta make sure that they understand what we need to work on. See, I flipped it from captain obvious and I asked them to own it. Because separate from what I think, what are you gonna do? So right after a game's over, and we still do it today, there's two things that I say. First and foremost, what can we be better at? And I ask them to hold themselves accountable. So they'll be like, I gotta get the butt down. And it's almost a flush for them to just own it because there's nothing worse as an athlete because we hopefully some you've all experienced athletic, athletics at some point nobody likes to fail no one likes to let their team down but when you own it you can find a way to move on and you do some about it by putting extra work in it's, it's the teammates that don't own it and don't really work and have that attitude that it's hard to kind of continue to support them right so i help them flush it and then there's always the athlete that we're like you know is there anything that we can own is there anything that we can own oh well yeah i gotta get the bunt down thank you or I gotta run it out and I pull it from the game. But I got, there's sometimes you gotta call them out. Like I'm not gonna call you out, but you better own it. What do you got? You got anything for me? Got anything? Oh, are you, oh, okay, perfect, awesome, thank you. So then they give it up. And I'm not Captain Obvious, but I put them in a position where they have to own it and the whole team can feel better about, yeah, oh, that kinda sucked, that was kinda awkward. Yeah, and you better own it. Cause guess what, I got your back. If you own it, I will do everything I can to help you get back on track. If you don't own it, we're gonna have problems. But I don't have to point you out to get you to be better, but it does nothing if I tell you what you did wrong, Captain Obvious Coach, until you can own the fact that I made a mistake, but I will do something about it for my team. So we own it, a little bit of awkward sometimes, and then right after that, I'm like, what do you got? Anybody see anything that anyone did, the little things, and then all the hands fly up. Hustling, backing up, energy in the dugout, being able to have her back. After the home run, she threw a strike, you know, uh, two strike, and, I mean, we're all over the place because I have them also keeping the dugout track of 50 little things is the minimum for us. That means everybody in the dugout is looking for little things, for people that are hustling or backing up or having energy or, or you know, throwing a first pitch strike or a two strike success or all those things we just give credit for. So after the game, I don't gotta do a lot of talking. I, they own it, they recognize, and you'd be amazed at the things that they pay attention to. You'd be amazed at the things that some kid wishes that they got credit and they actually have this weird awareness, welcome to girls, where everybody kind of got credit, the obvious people, and then someone's going to say, so-and-so for being able to pick up the catcher's gear between innings. And you're like, there you go, right there, right? Like, trust me, I would never give somebody credit for that, but somebody was paying attention. And that little thing is a big thing, because guess what? The next game, that girl's hustling after her catcher's gear every time, because she knows that her teammates are watching. And they're building the momentum from within that we own. Like I say, I have like, we own it. We own it. We move on, we're gonna figure out how to be our best in the next opportunity, and that's all you can do. So it's not focused on outcome, it is the process and we enjoy it. We're not perfect, it's not what happens, it's what you do next, I constantly say that. And it's one of the powerful things about that exercise uh, on, on a routine is the consistency with it, because it's whether it's win or lose, big game, little game, it's kind of a normal process that we go through. If anything, there maybe is an occasionally a game that we just kind of, um, we keep it pretty short, yeah. but for the most part, it's a, it's a regular occurrence. It's something that happens on a regular basis. It's not just after a big loss and we want to kind of address it. So that, that consistency, athletes trust the process when they trust that it's gonna happen consistently and that it's a safe place. 
So those those are things that are really important. And one of the things that, that uh, you know, Coach I is really committed to, certainly in the last years, I think really, really about being consistent about that every single game. And it's a struggle as a coach. There's times we just don't want to talk to them. Just, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But you have to stay committed to it for them to get over that hump and then put yourself in a position to figure out how we're going to continue to get through this together. And the minute that you know or they know that you're in it with them, I mean, you can make left and right turns. You can even be wrong. But what we do, we do together as a group, and it's very powerful. So, you know, I just talked about it last night. I talked about before the game even started that there's been so many great moments on this stage, but, you know, you think you want to be those people on that stage, and there's so many ruins. I have so many visuals and memories of some really big moments, but it's not about luck, and it's not just about anything, you know, secret. It's more that those ruins have struggled. They have struggled and they failed, and they've learned how to how to uh, you know throw a punch back. They understand that the game will come back around. So it's not about being perfect tonight. I said it before the game. It's not about being perfect. There is no failure. We're here. We're here. We're, we get to play. But what you do afterwards is going to define you. And I can't wait to see you create a memory that you're going to be proud about later. And it happened. The game came back around. There were so many moments where there were ruins that were just pressing, and then they came back around. I'm like, it's going to come back around, Leah Jordan. It's going to come back around, Leah Jordan. And boom, you know, she finally got it. It's going to come back around, Rachel. This team's going to have your back. You cannot give up any more free passes, Rachel. I mean, back around, going round and round and round. Kylie Perez brought the team together and said, made everyone relax and say, remember, we committed to having fun. And that's not really fun when you're down by four and your freshman just dropped a routine pop fly. Not routine. Dropped a pop fly. Right? They scored three runs. We're like, is this really happening right now? When I just intentionally walked her and we got out of it, and now all of a sudden, boom, what just happened? But we actually pulled together and they committed to what we talked about from the very beginning. That's what we did. So we have a process, something to go back to. And that, and, and, and the honest truth is, that stuff works. They need something to go back to instead of just play catch, clutch up. Everyone shorten up and just clutch up right now. You need to clutch up. Well, no kidding. We're trying to do that how we do it, remember why we're here and how we got here. Let's do it together. We're going to pass the bat. I made everyone take a deep breath. We're going to start passing the bat and it's going to be a lot of fun. Watch what's going to happen right here. And boom, we actually kind of got after it. So any questions that you all have, I know you got to see it and you're like, well, how do I get that with my team? It starts from the beginning. You've got to be able to back it. There's a consistency factor as emotional coaches. Very difficult to do consistently, but I'm committed to that. And I make sure that they're committed to that. Even in those awkward moments, we've got to be able to do it. I mean, there's times after a game where I don't want to say a whole lot, and I'll just go, how many little things? And there, somebody will go 65. I'm like, great, we're taking care of the little things. It will come back around. Enough said. No need for words. Let's just move on. We'll get to the next one. Okay, but I make sure that they're paying attention to those little things. We really don't want to hear them right now, but at least we're paying attention to them. One of the other things that, uh, if, as you guys are thinking about questions about potentially what you saw last night or just in general, um, one of the things that we have to resist as coaches, especially as a head coach, um, I, I had the fortune to try to do that, and now I get to be able to support uh, Coach I as she being the head coach, is resist the urge to do more because it's a bigger game. Um, that That is something that your athletes sense. They sense when you're feeling more anxious, when you're feeling more a ur sense of urgency, they'll sense that. And how they respond, you don't know. Um, but it's certainly not a trusting situation where it's safe where they've been there. So we got to resist that as coaches. If we've done the work, if we put in the time, yeah, we stay with it, we stay committed, but we don't have to feel the urgency to do something different or more just because it's a bigger stage. That's, that, that is, that's, that's a big reason why. I love being in battle with, with Kirk and Lisa. I have a new volunteer coach this year, and he's phenomenal. Just person, presence, knowledge. He's been a baseball guy. And it was so funny, just at Supers, he was telling me, he's like, you know, we were bobbling, you are out of practice, and he's like, we're bobbling some things, but I'm working on the mechanic, because I know the game's gonna speed up in the World Series, and we gotta make sure that we play. And I'm like, and I stopped, and I just looked at him, and I kind of smiled, and he goes, I just wanna make sure you understood why they were, why they were bobbling, and I'm like, Rodney, First of all, the game is not going to speed up. We are not going to change anything. They are prepared. You tell them just the opposite. You're going to play the game in the exact same way that you've done it before. We don't change anything. And I've actually pulled my coaches together to say exactly that, including myself. This is where you do just the opposite. You trust that they are prepared. You act and walk the talk, even when, like I was just you know, talking to Carol, like, you know, yep, mom on the outside, got an inferno on the inside, but nobody can know that. You know, there's so many times as a coach that I want to get into that huddle and just go there, you know, and, I, and it literally, there's so many moments that I call timeout and I'm going there. 
I'm going there, you know, and then I, I come in and literally like rally the girls up and like everyone take a deep breath, okay, you know, like, and literally find myself doing that. I had a moment in Arizona where, have you ever felt like your team was flat? <laughs> right? You kind of just sense it and you're like, my blood's starting to go like this, like, oh, here we go. We're going to go down that mode of, we already know it's already getting set up and I'm watching them and I'm paying attention to them and I'm waiting to see and I'm kind of eye contacting a couple of them like, you know, okay, you guys see that I'm not going to go there, but I'm giving you the warning, right? And they're all, it was day three, we're actually at Arizona, we're day three, we beat them game one, we beat them game two, handily, like, oh, we got this, we're good to go. And I could feel myself going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I literally, I pulled everyone together in the dugout. I waited for a good 25 minutes to give myself credit. Like I sat there for 25 minutes, torturing myself on, do I do it, do I do it? And I didn't talk to anyone. And then 20, I pulled everyone together. I'm like, everyone bring it in. I'm like, oh, I said it out loud, here we go. So I brought everyone together and everyone, everyone could sense my tone. I saw their faces kind of go to, uh-oh, like where's she going, right? And I brought them all together, and literally, I did not even know what I was going to say, except for that I knew that I was on edge, and I wanted to be able to make sure that they woke up, because that's my job, is to make sure, right? My job is to make sure you're prepared and you're dialed in. So I brought them all together, and then they all kind of looked at me, and I said, I want to know, I want to hear some fun things of what we're going to look forward to getting out of I was like almost stumbling. What are we going to look for? What are we doing today? Give me some purpose and tell me what you're doing. I just want to know what's on your minds. And all of a sudden, all these things started popping up. We're gonna go for this. We're gonna get ground rule double. We're gonna roll up a double play. We're gonna walk it up. I mean, they, they had, they were like, they were dialed in. They had all these thoughts going on, but their body language to me was t making up a big story that they weren't prepared. And I, so I added to it and I said, I got something for you. See that ball in center field that the home run off, anyone hits that, anywhere you wanna go for dessert afterwards. So here I went to like go in and just like ready to strangle the team and I flipped it to see the target, anyone get after that, anywhere you want to go. Team goes crazy, like I'm thinking worst case scenario, we're going to go have a fat dessert on day three. We know idea. <laughs> so we're playing the game, we're playing the game and everyone's kind of dialed in, the energy flipped completely because it was all their ideas. Now they're all these, all these energy and they're going. We get into the game and bottom line, now somebody took a big cut and went straight center and the girl, everyone went like, oh my god, and, I, and they caught it, it was a sack fly, and I said, no, I said hit it, I didn't say towards it, and I'm like, coach, it went straight to center field, I'm like, sorry, I'm like, no, I said hit it, I didn't say that, so Kylie Perez gets to the plate, this is like in the six, we're already up by three or four, and she gets up to the plate, and um, right before that, at the time, her sister was leading off, and she took a big hat, and she turned around, and she missed it, and she looked at Kylie, and she got a smile, and Kylie looked at me, and she goes, oh, she's going for it, coach, I'm like, the six inning, you're running out of time, that's all I'm saying, right? Bree gets out, well Kylie goes and she looks at me and she gets up there and she takes the hack that she took last night. <laughs> Boom! And she hits it, it goes straight center and I stood up and as she's running and the whole team is like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Straight center, hits the center field black thing, like seriously, hits it, turns around, almost misses first base, turns to the guy and like points, it's like, this it! She's going around the whole thing and the dugout goes crazy and they almost dog player it. And I can remember that afterwards the media's like, what do you guys got going on, right? But in the biggest of moments, you have that ability to flip their mindset. And as coaches, man, we make up our stories of what we think, they're, where they think they are, but redirect them and make them share it back. Give them something and it doesn't always work out. It doesn't, but when you put yourself in that position and you practice that, things can happen. Kylie did exactly what she did. She's like, Coach, I was going for it. And I'm like, I know this. She already did that before. It's just like Arizona. She did it before. And, and with it, literally, after she took the first cut, I don't know how many people were really paying attention, she took the first one and she fouled it off. And she looked at me and I was like, we're passing the bat, Kylie. Like, it wasn't go for it. We're passing the bat. And she looked at me and she kind of smirked and she, boom, she crushed the next one. She's like, I was going for it straight up. But she had done that before. So little things, little things for you guys to be able to figure out. As coaches, our job more than anything is to connect with them. There's so many, we have knowledge, all of you, I guarantee all of you have the same information that I do. It's how you impact these girls in the biggest moments to allow them to be able to be at their best when it's needed. And it's not easy. It doesn't always work out for us. It doesn't always work out for you, but it's the process that we're focusing on to then allow them to be able to perform at the biggest moments. There's no guarantees tonight. But our ability to make sure that they're prepared, we feel good, we feel prepared and as a coach my job is to make sure that they know that Kirk and I and Lisa and Rodney are completely have their back and we're in it with them and then let them play the game.
Does anyone have any? Yeah.